All right, guys, welcome to another episode of CUDA Education. This is the Vulcan API discussion series. Um, so today I, um, um, I'm starting a new kind of sub-series, um, and this is for the gears.cpp um, algorithm that uh, Sasha Willems has uh, donated to the world. So um, if you look up here, uh copyright 2016 sasha williams and this is the um the license that he uses um this code is freely available on github um and basically the purpose of the uh the, the code is to help people to learn how to use the vulcan api um now you know really quickly if you want to join in and get up to speed with what we're dealing with and actually have the code running on your machine you need to purchase tutorial number one and tutorial number 13 at a minimum. Those are the main requirements, tutorial number one and tutorial number 13. Tutorial number one is to um, install the Vulkan API on a Windows-based machine with a Vulkan-capable GPU. Um, so look up the GPU on your Windows system and you know, Google to find out if it, if it, if it can... Um, you know, if it, if it can use Vulkan or have Vulkan installed on it. Um, <clears throat> so tutorial number one is installing it on your machine. And then tutorial number 13 is for um, actually installing uh, Sasha Williams examples. So um, he has a whole bunch of examples, you know, you know, more than 20 plus examples that basically you can install, um, you know, in in uh, on your system and and through the Visual Studio um, IDE, and run these examples. And then from the examples, when you run them and tinker with, you could tinker with the code and change things and break things and fix back things or, you know, do whatever you want and get, um, you know, learn learn in the process. So today we're dealing with the gears. Um, the gears uh, situation, and um, I'm just gonna run. I'm just gonna run the algorithm so you know what we're talking about here. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna build it first, and then after it's built, I'm gonna run it. So as you can see here, it's um, a set of three. A set of three uh, gears that, you know, three different colors, and the gears just kind of run in tandem, um, and that's pretty much it. So you know, normally you have the triangle, um, which which everyone has kind of been doing, but you know, this is a little different. I actually think it's, um, you know, I don't know, somewhat simpler even, but you know, that's up for debate. Um, so yeah, that's what, that's what the, the script does gears.cpp. Right. And, um, as I said, thank you, Tasha Williams for, um, donating this to society and, you know, we could learn in the process. So there you have it. You could zoom in, zoom out, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Um, you know, and, uh, that's pretty much it. So we're, we're going to, um, <clears throat> We're going to basically, uh, you know, just just very small bite sized piece by piece. I'm going to try and um, break down this algorithm so that we all can learn. Um, and the main way that I'm going to go about doing it is basically I'm going to start with this prepare section of the code um, <clears throat> right here. Now, please note that there's a lot of like encapsulation and stuff. So, you know. There's like a base body of code that that um uh, that, that 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 basically all the different examples run off of, and we use that base body of code for like functions and stuff. So <clears throat> you know, I'm 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 just trying my best to simplify things and and encourage you guys to actually run the code on your system and and learn as I'm learning. So you know, you have this uh, prepare section of the code, which is basically what is what is used to 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 set things up um there's a vulcan example based prepare which you know if you were interested you could always go go to definition and find out you know go to declaration go to definition 
and find out where you know all of these things come from for the sake of simplicity i'm not going to do that um, i'm going to assume that you you have the code at least running on your system so you could follow along and tinker as your your heart desires but i'm not going to really bother with this i'm not going to dive into this what i will go though is into all these other pieces here so basically a test for you see how it says render and then if it's not prepared it's going to return but if it is prepared it's going to you know proceed with the algorithm so this is kind of the core of gears.cpp so that's what we're going to run with for this particular video we're going to focus on prepare vertices uh, the prepare vertices function okay so let's just focus on that um you know and uh We'll, we'll take it from there. So again, as you know, the script is basically, you know, you're, you're rendering three gears and they're spinning and they're different colors, right? So um, here's our prepare vertices function. Um, and let's just dive into it. So we prepare vertices, we have the prepare vertices function. We have all of these um, declarations and all it is, is, is just basic, simple, pure bead pure breed vectors right nothing special nothing out of this world it's just we're just declaring variables and we're giving giving the variables values okay um all the way up to basically here okay nothing special um it's just you know like you open up a a, a c++ application and you you prepare a bunch of variables okay um that's that's pretty much what this is so um <clears throat> we prepare the variables um please be mindful that these variables are still on the cpu side of things right so um remember this is computer graphics and we eventually want to get to the gpu but these simple variables that are these vectors that are created it, they're all they're all basically on the cpu side on the hard drive on the ssd whatever you want to call it, it it's not on the gpu side of of things of town yet okay so we prepare all these variables uh pretty straightforward um and then we go to gears dot resize positions size so i have investigated that this variable basically renders to three i'm gonna guess that one two three it's three um you know three three vectors and that makes sense it's going to be three vectors because we have three gears, all right? So nothing special there. Now, if we change, if we change uh, this instead of three and do one or two, then we'll have one gear or two gears. That's also nothing too hard to understand because, and, and, and more, most importantly, not only am I hard coding in the positions that's different from what this resolves to, but also um it doesn't crash the code right so that's kind of an important consideration so if i only use one gear it doesn't crash the code and the reason why it doesn't crash the code is because it basically you know if you if you resize gears to just one one item right in the for loop the for loop is only going to go through one time so what is in this for loop so we're basically cycling through all the gears right so we're cycling through all the gears <coughs> we have this type gear info now remember guys any variable you want more information on you could go to definition go to declaration find all references all of that good stuff for, for the sake of simplicity i'm not going to do it here but you are certainly free to do it on your own time so you could right click and get all the information you need on all of these declarations including gear info and as as it kind of is self-explanatory the gear info type is basically you're trying to declare a bunch of information that is attached to the gear. Okay, nothing too, nothing too hard to understand. Um, so we have the first gear, for example, and then we have the inner radius of the first gear and the outer radius of the first gear and the width of the first gear and the number of teeth of the first gear and the number of the tooth depth of the first gear and the color of the first gear and all that stuff. And all of these things are basically referencing the hard data that we have typed in up here okay so one two three one two three width one two three one two three depth all that stuff right not too hard to understand um the colors 
Uh, we have three instances here. Um, right, one, two, three. Position, one, two, three. Uh, rotation speed, one, two, three. And, you know, some clockwise, some counterclockwise, I would assume the negative means and all of that stuff. Now, if, you, if we look at the... Uh, If we look at the uh, the gears, we can see that all of the gears have different radiuses, right? Different size radiuses. So this one is big, this one is smaller, and this one is the smallest, right? You also notice that uh, this one is clockwise, this one is counterclockwise, and this one is counterclockwise. If we look at the... Uh, rotation speed, I would assume clockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, right? Um, which would make sense because um, we, we are dealing with uh, <clears throat> we're dealing with uh, um, you know, we're dealing with you know, negatives and positives, all right? So that, that's not too difficult to understand, right? And of course, you could change these values to see what happens. Um, you could change the rotation offset, um, all of that good stuff. And, you know, you could, you could see, see what happens, okay? So we, we're basically declared a bunch of data, looped through each of the gears to basically define them. And we've used this gear info type, which you could dive into on your own time and then you know Vulcan gear again you could also do this thing here um, and then you could uh, generate the gear all right so that's not too too bad um, again of course always free, feel free to tinker with it all right so remember I said that this is still still pretty much if you ask me, it's still pretty much on the CPU side. Now, I have, so this is basically up to, you know, I'm gonna finish up to here, right? So remember now that in Vulkan, you don't just, uh, you know, you have to basically tell Vulkan what the data is, how how to treat it and and um you know prepare prepare Vulcan to receive this data. And that's what binding descriptions and attribute descriptions are all about. Now I have created a white whiteboard video on binding descriptions and, and attribute descriptions, which I will include in the um a link to it in the description below. Um this is also part of the pipeline vertex input rate discussion, vertex input rate discussion, right? So, um, binding and attribute descriptions are shared across all gears. So just to give you a, a quick uh, review, um, it's almost like, you know, if you don't have these binding and attribute descriptions and the, the pipeline input, input rate vertex um, situation, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't uh, declare these things, it's almost as if you're giving, you're giving Vulcan, the Vulcan API a blank USB stick uh, with data on it, but you don't explain the cadence of the data, what the data is, what type of data it is, um, when the next index in the data changes over. So like, let's say you have, um, you know, eight, eight blocks of data. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, you might need to tell them that the first four data is is vertex data, and the 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 the, the second four data is like um, instance data or something, right? So, and then the attribute descriptions now tells you exactly, um, you know, like what type of data it is. So if you see here on the attribute side, it, it's it's this kind of data, right? This kind of data, and then it also tells you. Um, you know, so we, we talk about the bindings here. So you have binding one, which might be four blocks, and binding two, which might be the other four blocks. But 
the um <clears throat> you also have to actually you know declare how how big those blocks are or how 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 much data each of those blocks will take up so you know it's very important that you 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 take into consideration the binding and attribute descriptions i don't want to get too into it in this video because it's kind of going to confuse you and 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 make it too long and i don't want to do that uh, but definitely review that uh, whiteboard discussion um, in the <coughs> link in the description below. All right, so um, let's let's get into it. So we we've kind of created the gears, at least um, you know, data wise or or ty typographically wise, right? But um, we still we still need to basically. Um, prepare the graphics pipeline and let the graphics pipeline know that, hey, we have all this data and we want to give it to the Vulkan API. And, um, you know, generally speaking, the way I like to think about it is give, quote unquote, giving it to the Vulkan API is sort of, even if, if you will, transferring it to the Vulkan API, transferring it to the GPU and like, you know, incorporating it into the, the, the graphics pipeline, right? So the high level thing, is the bindings first so we have vertices that binding descriptions resize one i'm going to leave that alone for now and basically you know we have this helper function here vertex input binding description and then the vertex buffer bind id the size of the vertex and then what what what, what is what type of, of of information is this supposed to be used for and it's supposed to be used for it's, it's vertex-based information. So usually with the binding, it's either vertex-based or it's instance-based. So a vertex is like a vertex of a triangle. So you have one, two, three vertices of a triangle. Or it can be instance-based. So I want many triangles, right? So it could either be vertex-based or instance-based. In our case, it's vertex-based because we're, you know, we're, we're, we're building out the gears and all that, right? So um, we declared this bind ID somewhere. Uh, okay, we right. So it's it's bind ID zero. All right. Um, right. So we we declared this bind ID and then size of vertex. I'm not going to dive into do, to this too much. And then we're declaring also that this information is. <coughs> vertices based or vertex based that's that's what that's what the the pipeline and vulcan api and all that is expecting okay it's expecting vertex data now we're getting a little bit more granular so inside of these blocks of so we just have one binding just one one section one one chunk of thing that we're dealing with um in other algorithms you might have many bindings you might have you know binding bind the first binding is um is is for vertex information the second binding is for instance information and in the video about this with the link below i talk about that so but because this example is simple and we like simple it's just um it's just one binding and it's vertex information now attributes description describes memory layout and shader um shader positions okay so um we resize it to three um I'm assuming, I don't even want to assume, I'll just leave it at that. And then we have locate, we have the position information. So um, vertex input attribute description. So notice that the helper function is changed. So we had vertex input binding description, vertex input attribute description. Now we have the same bind ID just as, as this before. Um, this is, uh, uh, Right, this this would be the location. Um, this is the type of data that we're we're inputting. So it's this VK format float. I'm not gonna get into it. And then this pretty much is the kind of the size of the data or something, or like how much it will take up, I, I assume. Right? So this this um th this is dealing with with position information, right? Um uh position so let's see uh, 
Right, so that's that's for the position information. Now, normal, which I'm not quite sure, but basically we still have the same vertex buffer binding ID. This is one, um, same data type, but notice now that the, um, the, 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 the space or the chunk of information that we're dealing with here is the size of a float times three. Um, that's for the normal. And then we get to the color. Again, attributes descriptions zero, one, and two. Right, so we're, we're basically filling up the attribute descriptions um, situation here. Right, so that's, that's, that's I guess, why it's size, resize of three, right? So here now we have our helper function again, same buffer ID. This is, you know, position to same kind of information here in terms of what, what, it's, what it's expecting. <coughs> and then it's the size of a float times six. Now, I am not even going to try to tackle um, why it's times six but I'll leave it alone, okay? So we have this vector here, obviously, you know, it's three and three and all that, but okay, we, we, we run it at six. And um, that's, that's pretty much, you know, where, where we're at. So we have, so just to recap, recap real quick, we define all our variables, we generate the gears, right? Um, gears generate blah 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 all right and then we have the binding so it's just one binding and it's vertex data and then we get more granular about what's in that data so um we know the type of data that's in there and we know kind of the space that it's supposed to take up all right and that's <clears throat> that's um you know that's pretty straightforward i mean obviously there are granularities and particulars that i i <clears throat> you know, I'm not going to get into, but, you know, that's pretty much it. And, and just also be mindful that notice that the helper function is vertex input binding description for this one. And remember, you could always go to declaration or go to definition to find out more about what it is, which is why it's important for you guys to have this, this code running on your machine, right? So um, the tutorial number one, tutorial number 13, you don't need any previous coding experience to do this. All right, so once you're, once you're up to here now, now we're gonna actually, um, now we're actually gonna, you know, create the pipe, pipeline vertex input state, right? Um, and basically it's all of these declarations here. They're, it's pretty self-explanatory. Again, we have a, another helper function, but, but luckily Sasha, you know, he names the, the helper functions um, very verbosely, so, we kind of know what he's calling. Again, there's a lot of underlying base code that I'm not going to get into for the sake of simplicity, but basically he has vertices, not input state, and he initializes the pipeline vertex input state create info. Um, notice that he's not passing in anything at the moment. But in the next line, he goes vertex binding description count, and it's, it's vertices binding descriptions uh size no i'm gonna guess that this variable resolves to one because um it's just one binding we have right um um and then and then we call vertices binding descriptions data so we now so we we give it the count of one and then we basically push the data for the bindings into this, right? So we, we call the data and we push it into this vertices.input state, <coughs> what have you. Um, and then we repeat again, but now we're doing it for the attribute description count. So for attribute description, I believe that it's basically three, right? I believe when you're dealing with this, you're counting from one, or you're not counting from zero. So I believe this would resolve to three. But of course, that will be your homework, guys, for you to figure out what this resolves to, right? So I believe it will be three, right? Um, uh, so, right, vertices, inputs. So we, we, we declare the count, and then we push the data from the attribute descriptions, which is all of this stuff right here, 
we push the data into the vertices input state um, p vertex attribute descriptions right so now we're just pushing the data into the vertices thing now i am curious to find out this vertices thing because it kind of just came up out of the blue right um let me do i want to go to definition for vertices all right so this is our definition for vertices it's actually at the top of the uh algorithm right so if you look here um we have this base base example vulcan base example code and um we have pipeline vertex input state create info input state um binding descriptions attribute descriptions and this is all part of vertices so notice that when we call the input state and we call the binding description and the attribute descriptions it, it was already declared it wasn't like you know at least the, the the type was already sort of declared at the initial of the code um hmm uh do i want to go here and figure out what input state is sure i want to get in trouble though uh okay i guess i guess it's it's just what it is there's, there's no nothing behind it so vq vk pipeline vertex input state create info right so um that's that's what the vertices is so there you have it guys um I'll leave it there at that for, for the, the first gears.cpp video. Um, I guess in the next video, I will do the next in line, which would be set up descriptor set layout, right? Which is a different cup of tea. But for now, you know, just understand that uh, for the binding descriptions and the attribute descriptions, you know, this is sort of a process to get everything into the vertices and notice that the vertices the variable um, is is declared here um, VK now remember guys you could always Google these types here so you could Google these types so you could go to the chrono spec or the Vulcan API spec I can't show it here um, on on my video because uh, they you know they have regulations against that but um just google it just just drop this into google and the first thing that usually comes up is um you know we'll we'll give you more information on these types um so let's just do a quick review again um so we started off with the pre prepare vertices function um we define a whole bunch of variables we loop through the gears um, to fill in the each gear with with its appropriate data. Um, we bind. Um, we basically <coughs> bind the data um, and tell tell Vulcan that it's vertex information that we're giving to it. It's only one binding, but the attributes uh, it, it has three kind of different things to it granularities remember it the attribute describes memory layout and shader positions right so position zero position one and position two and then the memory layout is basically this declaration right where you're you're saying what's the size of each position or the size of each piece of data right so it's it's allocating for different pieces and then we basically um you know transfer all of this into the vertices variable with its input state and that's that's where we ended at um yeah i I'm, i really should um investigate more about this input state thing here um uh, but that's it guys um uh, thank you sasha williams for this wonderful code um again um i'll i'll uh i'll include a description to all to the code base for the examples and everything remember guys tutorial number one tutorial number 13 if you want to start learning Vulkan, again, I assume no programming knowledge whatsoever. Uh, make sure it's a Windows-based machine. Make sure you have a GPU that's Vulkan capable. Your, your int integrated uh, GPU may or may not be able to run Vulkan. I don't know. That's something you have to, um, 
you know, figure out on your own. Uh, look up look up how to find your GPU on your system, and then Google to see if Vulkan can run on it. Um, all right, guys, like and subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Um, share share this video with your friends. Maybe you get a group of you together and learn something. Um, it's good to play video games and stuff, but maybe you want to create your own video game or like move the gears around in a different way or um, change the colors of the gears. All of these variables here, all of these variables here, you could tinker with, right? I'm not going to do it now, but you could tinker with, you could tinker with the positions, you could tinker with the rotation speed, um, you could take, change the radius of the gears, um, you could even, you know, change the number of gears that you see, um, change it to, to one, to two, to zero, see if it crashes, see, see what happens with the number of gears. Remember, you declare your information here, you loop through to create the gears, you do your binding and attribute descriptions here to basically tell Vulkan what it is you're, you're pushing to the Vulkan API, what it is you're pushing to, to like, um, you know, the GPU and all that stuff. You can't just give it, you can't just give it a USB stick. You have to describe what's on the USB stick, right? And then you have this input state, vertices that input state um, situation where, you know, now you're declaring everything in the pipeline and all that stuff. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Um, I'll see you at the next video.